Howdy partners, Cyberbard here. So today we are finally going to make our assault on Gustavsen Gulch. Now I did want to let you know that while I was doing my wanderings um, in between the last episode and today, I did find this circus here and I don't know what's up here, but I figured today would be a good day to hit the gulch. I mean, we've, we've built ourselves up quite a bit. We've done a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, we've done a lot of exploring. Look at all these places that we've hit so far. I figure it's time that we mosey on along a little bit. So let's see if we run into anything. Oh, a lockpick. Hmm. <clears throat> so we got a bunch of stuff. Instant grits. Jellied escargot. Hmm, this is good for us. Soda crackers. Laudanum, which is excellent, nerve pills, and maximum HP. So that's good. But let's go back to Gustavsen Gulch. Oh look, it's a goblin. A fancily dressed goblin steps forward. Hi, hello, being a bear. Welcome. Now, going away, please. The goblin seems friendly, but blocks your entry into the gulch. Let's talk to the goblin. <clears throat> Can I not coming in? Sorry, only for goblins being very private. Trick him into leaving. Hey though, outside the gorge I was seeing a thing you liking a lot. Oh, what thing? What thing do you liking a lot? Hmm, <clears throat> pies? There are pies all over out there being. This seeming dubious, but with neglectful being to not checking it out. The mayor takes a fork out of his pocket and leaves. Well, that was simple. Sign says, nothing interesting in goblin. You hear a quiet rustling as though a single goblin were rummaging through a crate filled with straw. Go in and beat the straw out of it. Damn right. Now, I have sped up the combat because it was taking a long time, so this will save a little bit of time for us. May that trigger happy goblin trigger sad instead. Ball. You dig through the crates the goblin was rummaging through, but there's nothing interesting in any of them. Damn. All right. Let's see what else there is. Hmm. What have we here? Science says library and goblin. Goblins have libraries? The shack is filled with crude bookshelves. The bookshelves, in turn, are filled with crude books. Three titles catch your attention. So very complicated numbers. All you can tell about this book is that it concerns extremely high-level mathematics. You don't have the vocabulary to understand any of it, and probably still wouldn't if it was written in English. Your brother would probably love it. Love it. How to Bird Noise This book is an extremely detailed treatise on the sounds that different birds make. You probably wouldn't expect to learn how to do an accurate Great Crested Grebe impression from a book, but that's how detailed it is. Alice Going Into a Seeing Glass This popular children's novel has been translated into Goblin. Jabberwocky still reads pretty much the same. Oh, it brillig being and toves of slithing did in a way bujiring and also gimbling. I think that that's pretty much it here, so maybe there's something else that we need to find before we come back to that library. Doesn't seem to have much, unless it was just for flavor. The sign says Delicatessen Goblin. Ooh, Goblin Delicatessen? <clears throat> Grass, look like the door is locked. Well, that's what lockpicking is for. You enter what turns out to be a Delicatessen and help yourself to what turn out to be sandwiches. Probably. So, Goblin Sandwich increases your moxie by 5 for the rest of the day, but decreases your muscle and mysticality by 3. Okay. So, if we don't really care about the other stats, storage... Shack is filled with thousands of tiny cabinets, each labeled with a number in Goblin. Nothing in the drawer, but you find an old lollipop stuck to the bottom of the drawer above it. Hmm. Keep looking. Look in a more random drawer. Goblin sandwich. And goblin trousers. So basically, if it's a goblin item, it's, it's going to boost something well and suck at the others. Science is red herring storage. Oh, this is probably a joke, but we're going to look anyway. Here are a couple of goblins rustling around in there. Sounds like they're doing something really important. Ho, 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 I get where this is going. 
Hmm. Boxy 17. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our bad medicine. They have almost no moxie. And then we're going to, boom, one-shot them. Ouch. Yeah. Nothing. Mayor's house. Well, he's gone, so let's take a look. It's made of cactus logs with a blanket made of woven together cactus needles that can't be comfortable. What a bed. Check the desk. Desk is strewn with folders. You notice one that says important secrets on it. You learn a variety of secrets, though the only one that's actually pertinent in your circumstances is that there's a spare key to the treasure cave in drawer 69105 in the storage hut. Nice! So which one was the storage hut again? Was it this one? Yes, it is. Get over here. 69105. Gustavsen Gulch Treasure Cave Key. Excellent. Now what do we have here? This says, Theater? A goblin theater? You press your ear to the door and hear somebody delivering what sounds like lines from Hamlet, except in goblin tongue. From this vantage point, you also notice a sign next to the door reading, Backstage entrance here at being, with an arrow pointing to the back of the building. Let's head backstage. You sneak backstage and watch the play from behind a curtain. Not only is it a goblin version of Hamlet, it's also being rewritten as a one-man show. To being or to not being? Oh, that is a question. Could it be better thinking to suffering a crazy things and arrows? Or fighting so many bad things for stopping them because fighting? To dying. To sleeping. To sleeping. Hey! Dreaming, maybe. But, oh, problems. If dreaming, crazy when living, what dreams having after dying? Wow! Pretty weird, probably. You watch for a while. The bits where the actor has to do a sword fight with themselves are pretty entertaining. I guess there's nothing else to do here. Cafe. Well, let's see what's in the Goblin Cafe. You enter what turns out to be a cafe and reconstruct a few cups of chicory from the leavings in various dirty cups and sinks. You stop to wonder why a cafe wouldn't be open at this time of day. You see a schedule posted on the wall, and sure enough, it says somebody named Gene is supposed to be working this shift. He always was a shiftless lay about that, Gene. You got an, uh, you got an item, Goblin Chicory. So again, this one boosts speed, but it's going to reduce everything else. So, of course, Goblin Chicory would reduce the speed. Uh, we increase the speed. Sign says guard barracks. Well, obviously we want to go in here. Guns blazing. Hmm. This guy's the most dangerous one. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to bad medicine him, then I'm going to smoke him. Did I really just shoot the cactus? Aw, oh, man. That's okay, I've already debuffed him, so... Hey, you. Go, Alice, go! You leave Alice alone! Okay, well, we would have gotten the Goblin Gulch. What the hell is this? Goblin manufacturer usually involves randomly welding things together until they do approximately what you want, and this pistol is no exception. So this is funny because it's damage 1 to 15. So the potential for damage is high, but it's also potential to be low damage. Hmm. 72 meat. <clears throat> Treasure cave. All right. Huh. A whole bunch of goblins. This goblin is paying more attention to their book, Goblet, than to you, but you're pretty sure you aren't going to be just be waltzing on by. Spoil the ending. Hey, Goblet, good book. 
What thinking about how Goratio is only surviving one at the end? Everyone else dying! Poisoning! Sorting! Pow! Blam! Ah! No! Wow! Spoilers! The Gar runs out of the cave with their hands over their ears. They gain 20 XP. Well, that was easy. This goblin guard is whittling a little wooden bird call, but they're not too busy to beat you up if you try to get past them. Oh, try out my bird call skills from the goblin library. You duck behind a slagmite and do your great crested grebe impression. Oh, gasp! A great crested grebe, wow! The guard pulls a pair of binoculars out of his uniform and runs out of the cave. Wow, these guys are dumb. Unlike the other two guards, this one is also being very attentive and seems very suspicious of you. Also, unlike the other two guards, they have a name tag that says Gene. There's that shiftless layabout. Remind them about their cafe shift. Hey, Gene, you supposing working at cafe today? You forgetting? Oh, wow, oh no! The goblin quickly takes off their guard uniform and puts on a cafe uniform and races out of the cave. So we just got 60 XP from those interactions. Pretty good. It's a rare and valuable treasure ca uh, chest cactus. Pick the lock. Oh wow, 1,496 meat? That's a lot. Holy crap. A year's supply of dynamite. Alright. This is what we were looking for before. And this one is also locked. Goblin engagement ring, goblin tiara. I do not need either of these things. Thank you very much. <clears throat> but... That being said, we are in a good place right now. We've got uh, essentially what we need. So we're going to be able to head back to the Manifest Destiny Railroad camp. Before I do that though, I just want to see if there's anything that we might have missed over in dirt water. Just to be sure. <laughs> now, this dude... Listening to the piano. <coughs> Who's that old man by the piano? Oh, that's Ellsbury. Tragic fella he is. He was a writer and a poet. Came out west to sell his stories, but nobody were buying. Too weird his stories. Fantastical like. Too bad. I love that stuff. Well, it don't matter much now, anyhow. He had to get normal work to make ends meet. It passing well as a prospector until one day he lost his mind in a mind. He what now? You know what I mean. He saw something. Something that made him stop telling his weird tales. Made him stop talking near completely come to that. He just stands there by the piano nowadays. Seems to calm him down. And as long as he doesn't make any trouble, I don't mind him too much. Feel a little sorry for him, to be honest. Poor fella. You're handy with mechanical type stuff. Something's gone wrong with our player piano player. I thought the music sounded a little off. Yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> can we talk to him now or what? Is I Oh, Ellsbury, that's it. That helmet that we picked up a while ago. Okay, this is Ellsbury. His eyes light up. Well, one of them does. The other's kind of stuck in a perpetual squint. This belong to you? He takes the helmet from you. It takes him a moment to find his voice. It, it does. Long time ago. Ah, I don't suppose there was anything else where you found that. You mean this? Bottle of laudanum? Yeah, that's the stuff. Could, could I? Give it to him. He cracks the bottle open and drinks it deeply. After a few moments, his demeanor changes entirely. He looks like a man 20 years younger. Would you like to hear a story? Yes. Ellsbury tells you a tale about a forgotten desert where feral cats court and marry intelligent people. Something about that story? You really lost yourself in it. You gained 30 XP. Thank you, Ellsbury. Huh. So I guess for every bottle of laudanum, we get XP from this guy. 
Ellsbury tells you a tale of a baker who suddenly awakens in a curious undersea plateau inhabited by maniacal children. Interesting. Ellsbury, you're a man after my own heart. Have some more laudanum. Hopefully this doesn't kill you. Ellsbury tells you a tale of a grave digger who gets kidnapped and taken to a nightmarish plateau inhabited by miniature horses. Wow, okay. So I would like a story, Ellsbury. Tells you a tale of a painter who takes a magical boat to a long forgotten hellscape inhabited by imaginary trees. Wow, this guy is having some good, good stories. Otherworldly windswept city where barbaric monkeys are ruled over by mani maniacal beasts. Hmm. Do you have any more laudanum? Nope. Sorry, Ellsbury. That's too bad, my friend. Now, we have come into quite a bit of experience. Now, huh. The dilemma here, because I want to boost my deploy snake skill, but I think that it would probably be wise of me to enter my uh, my lockpicking expertise to maximum as soon as possible because you never know when something could come up where you need to pick that really tough lock hmm i think i'm going to put it into there and i will save the rest of my experience points sorry about that Ulysses, but we need to be what the hell isn't that the cactus man cactus bill didn't expect to see you around these parts well I gotta admit, I got a little envious when I saw you leaving Barn Springs. I figured I'd hitch a ride out west to see what I could see. And just look at this place. So much hustle. So much bustle. There sure is a lot of both of those. Hey, nice pot. Thank you kindly. So what's new? Well, to be honest, what's new is a profound sense of longing and loneliness. I'm sorry to hear that, Bill. Well, it is what it is. I was hoping I'd run across a similarly lonely cactus lady somewhere out here, or feeling that, a normal human lady looking to marry a cactus. No luck? Not yet. Of course, getting around is a bit of a challenge, but us cactuses live a long time. I'm sure I'll meet somebody. Someday. I'll keep an eye out. Heck, I would sure would appreciate it. Yeah, that's just weird. Oh yeah, I gotta get this guy, uh special pills to unbreak his legs of course uh huh does this guy need a baker no let's get out of here maybe the cook in the kitchen at the dirt water because remember we found that camp with the lady who is a baker and wanted to get the hell out of there so let's take a look over here kitchen what do you gotta say Nope. Nope, so no bakers needed as of yet. Probably it'll be later on that we find that. Uh, up in there. Uh, up in there. <laughs> okay. So let's head our way back to... Actually, you know what? Let's go to the rescue mission first. Because we're going to buy those pills. Get some free binoculars. Because this lady in here sells medication. Broken leg pills. There we go. Back to dirt water. Well, we had to go to dirt water anyway. So we'll pick up the peasants. Hey, look, I'm on the ground with you. Here you go. Phew, thanks. I feel like a new man again. Or at least the same man with a new leg. That's good. Go drink some milk or something, okay? Well, that was nice. Good girl, Petunia. Alright, so let's go to the railroad camp. Ouch. Crab walk, crab walk, crab walk.
Here you go. Here's your dynamite. Smee consults with the other workers and they inspect the rocks for a time. Eventually, one of them shrugs, pushes the whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks, and wires up a detonator. All right, let her rip. Sweet. What the holy heck is that thing? Wow. This looks like some kind of rock golem. Well, better go kill it. There's a very large and very angry looking thing? Guy? Standing here? Apparently it's a little peeved at having a year's supply of dynamite blown up next to its butt while it was sleeping. How are you going to handle this? Aw oh, man. I want to fight it, but at the same time... Ugh. Let's dance at it. The rock monster is extremely strong, but that only matters if it can hit you, and it is geologically slow. Dancing around the creature, you find plenty of places to stick a knife, widening fractures and fissures created by the initial dynamite blast. Eventually, the entire thing just crumbles into gravel with an angry groan. Booyah! You gain 45 XP. Suck on that, rock golem. Ow. Well, now that is as fine a day of day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We're getting the rest of this track laid down and head out now. Here, I'll mark our route on your map for you in case our paths happen to cross again. Thanks, but can't I just ride the train? Got a ticket? Ah, uh, just kidding. Of course you don't. Every seat on this train sold out. Sorry, boss. You rat. Well, so much for that. Being a good Samaritan. Ah, well. So, do we have anything of import to look at here? Not right now, no. But, we now have a whole other set of stuff to look at. This is going to be intense. Let's head to the railroad camp just to see what we've got dealing here. <laughs> Soup stock load. Interesting. Let's stop and smell the soup. It's really close. Oh, look, Alice has something to say. Howdy, Doc. There's another cemetery near here we ought to check out. A pretty big one, name of Reboot Hill. Okay, I'll add it to the itinerary. Hmm. 170 meat. Honestly, the amount of meat that we have now, we're, we're pretty well set. Let's search these lockers. Can of oil, kerosene, dynamite. Can't ever have too much dynamite. See, look, lockpicking is getting tricky now. Hammer monkey wrench. Ooh. That's good. We need a pot to get the vessel of sea. Hmm. We need to find a pot somewhere. Maybe down further. Cultist mask? Ew. There's a diary under the crude pillow of the bedroll. Entry 1. This mine is the worst. It sucks so bad here. I've been in some lousy mines, but this one really takes the cake. Everything smells like soup. The walls are slick with it. I swear I can feel it getting into my pores. If I went to a doctor for a blood test, he'd probably tell me my blood is tomato basil bisque or whatever. Entry 2. Finally managed to get deep enough to hear the master, but it turned out the dang soup table is higher than we thought. We're spending 90% of our time bailing this stuff out and only 10% digging. I've got noodles in my boots. I hate this so much. Now the damn elevator is busted. There's always making a rattling noise. And the guys off ship couldn't sleep. That finally stopped, but it stopped because the elevator itself stopped and we can't move at all. Why do we even set up camp here? I had to spend the whole day scrounging around to find replacement 137, 59, and 23 pound compression springs for repairs. We'll install them tomorrow. So let's write this down. We've got 137, we have 59, and we've got 23. In case we need to note anything for after. Continue. Boss says we're giving up here and heading into a real deep mine they found up northwest. 
It's a shame we wasted all this work, but hot damn, it'll be good to get away from this soup. I'll never eat soup again in my life. You poor sad man, soup is awesome. Got the springs installed proper like, with the strongest behind the shortest bolt and so on, but there's no time to wrench everything down. Got a pack. Not like the elevator matters much anyway, anymore. I really hope I don't screw up again and forget my diary here when it's time to leave. I don't think I've ever managed to fill it more than 10 pages in the uh, same diary. That's the last entry. Okay. So, let's take a look at this elevator. Oh man. Uh, so this is going to be tricky. So it says 3,200 pounds pressure required and some sort of gauge currently reads zero, whatever that means. So we have 137, 59, and 23. Hmm. This gives four hundred and eleven pounds of pressure. Let's just uh, bottom this thing out, just so it's easier to... Okay, let's check this out again. So 3200. Let's note this then. So this one gives 411. This one gives 706. This one gives 867. Hmm. Okay. So this is going to take a little bit of calculation. So I'm going to figure that out without recording. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it alone for now. I've noted the info and uh, we'll start our next session off right here. We'll fix the elevator and see what, uh, what kind of interesting things we'll find down in soup stock load. So um, I thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click the thumbs up button at the bottom and click the subscribe button to subscribe, obviously. Feel free to leave a comment. I always appreciate those. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on my social media, you can do so on Twitter, Goodreads, Instagram, and uh, you can also add me as a friend on Steam. I will gladly play games with you uh, if uh, I am online at that time and free. So, uh, again, thank you very much for your continued viewership. This is the CyberBard signing off, and have a great day. Peace.